When it comes to buyouts, you can never be too sure to get the most accurate information. And in today's video, we're talking about the reserve list top 10, of course, but we have a lot to cover about what's going on with Magic the Gathering reserve list buyouts. They're happening more and more, and for some reason, let's face it, people are not talking about it. Welcome back everyone, MTG Moxman here with your weekly update on the reserve list top 10 hottest selling cards. And of course, stick around at the end of the top 10 for a further financial update on what's going on with reserve list cards. Now, of course, you can also support the Moxman by using my TCG player affiliate link found in the description of all my videos. Click that link and you're helping me out. Now, let's start out with number 10 today, which is going to be coming to us from Fallen Empires. And this is Rainbow Veil. This card has an average price of only $6.42, a far cry from the $25 it reached in 2021. Now, the 32 sales today represents $205 of total sales action, but that was only if they were near mint. I estimate that the amount of sales we've been seeing and on cards like this are all moderate to heavily played editions that people are getting for a song. They're picking them up for a buck or two and they're holding them into their collections. The constant consistent buying of these cards at these lower level of, of condition, it just shows that players are building up asset classes hoping to flip these cards later on. And there's a lot more to talk about at the end of this video, but we'll get there. Now, don't forget that this land taps for any color of to your mana pool, but then it passes to your opponent at the end of turn. Now, for our next card, again, we're talking Griffin Canyon, and that is coming to us from Visions. There's a lot of talk about this in the upcoming Final Fantasy, and there's a lot more sales going on because of it. The 35 sales this week at an average price of $6.62 represents $231.70 of total sales action. Now, with a card like Griffin Canyons that can untap a target Griffin and give it plus one, plus one until end of turn, it's actually not a bad ability considering this card doesn't come into play tapped. Considering how old this card is though and how long we've waited for a Griffin Tribal to really get off the ground, I think we have a number of years to go, but maybe Final Fantasy will give us the good kicking off point where Wizard of the Coast recognizes that there are so many different Tribal formats they can follow that there's a lot of players just hoping that they hit the ones that they're interested in. And something like Griffin Canyon will probably hit a high of like 50, 60 bucks if we ever get that Tribal, which is why players are picking up copies now while they're still relatively cheap. Now for our next card, it's not that cheap and it only gets worse from here. I want to remind you guys. Here is Lake of the Dead from Alliance. It's one of the most iconic pieces of artwork in Magic the Gathering history. It has 37 sales this week or $3,069.15 of sales action. This card is at $82.95. It's been drifting down ever so slowly. Kind of a light padded drop of a feather falling off a table. It's just going slowly, slowly, slowly down. But here's the thing. This card does a lot. Let's not forget, forget the artwork. I mean, it's amazing, but we'll forget it for a second. Lake of the Dead comes into play. You gotta sacrifice a swamp or bury Lake of the Dead. It taps to add one black to your mana pool, but you can sacrifice a swamp to add four black to your mana pool. You can see why players keep desiring this card. And right now, moderate and heavily played are around 50 bucks on TCG player. You can save a lot of money by getting those moderate to heavily played copies. And that's what players are doing. Now for our next card today, we are jumping over and taking a look at Stronghold because this is Mox Diamond. And if you take a look at this card, it's starting to show what's going on. This card right now, with 45 sales at $699.99, is nearing its all-time highs of 2021. We are not far off the mark. It had $31,499.50 in sales action in a week. This card's on a lot of wish lists and it's topping out as one of the most desirable artifacts in Commander. Whether it's EDH or Casual, this is a card players are seeking. Now, earlier this year, this card was a lot cheaper. You could find copies for 450 bucks. That is no longer the case, but people aren't, aren't stopping. They're still buying it, which means this is the new price point. If they're selling at this price, this is where players and buyers are meeting in the middle. Get used to it. It's not getting any better anytime soon. If you need this card, Trade some old stuff, get something, but get it out of the way. 
Now for our next card, we're jumping over because of Bloomboro to Deranged Hermit. Now Bloomboro had this thing spiking off at around $85. It's been sinking ever since, but this week it makes it back onto the top 10 with 78 sales this week. $5,693.22 of sales action and a number of copies being sold. Now, the 78 sales is actually pretty significant considering we had Bloomboro kind of get knocked off the top spot of a lot of its uh, overall dominance in the market space. So let's take a closer look at Deranged Hermit. Now, for two green, three generic, this is a 1-1 one, one Summon Elf with Echo. And it also says when Deranged Hermit comes into play, put four Squirrel tokens into play. Treat these tokens as 1-1 one, one creatures, and then all Squirrels get plus one, plus one. Recursion, crazy stuff, great card. It's going to continue to fall. It's going to continue to see sales because this is the third or fourth time this card has spiked. Players are recognizing what goes on in the market. They're buying now to sell a few years down the road, and they will make a lot of money. FOMO follows the market. Now, for our next card, we're jumping over and taking a look at the Debt of Loyalty, and that's from Weatherlight. This card is $8.69 this week, but that didn't stop this thing from having a total of 95 sales, $825.55 of sales action. Doesn't seem like a lot of money, but that's okay because this card is actually a lot cheaper than it used to be. Now, when we take a closer look at this card, you're going to see we have a little bit going on more than just some cool artwork because the Debt of Loyalty is a two white, one generic, and it has Regenerate. But when you look at the card, you see that Target Regenerate creature comes at a cost. Because it says here in the card, regenerate target creature, gain control of that creature, okay? Now, when you look at some of the erratas and stuff on this, it, you know, this thing has to be, like, getting hurt and stuff. You can't just, like, regenerate some random creature the opponent controls and take control of it. It has to have taken damage and stuff. But this card seems to be having a little bit of a following. The sales are not linear. It's not one person buying them all. So there's more going on here. Guys, pay attention to this card. We'll see what happens in the next week. Now, for our next card, we're taking a look at Opalescence. This card hit big because of all the ley lines that are coming into Duskmore. Don't forget that whenever you see these things come up, these kind of sales happen. 134 sales this week, or $6,666.50 of sales action. The card jumped up to $49.75. And with that amount of sales, this really shouldn't be something you ignore. We've seen this before with cards like Mind Over Matter, which used to be like $120. It's all the way back down to like $40. Pay attention to the market, you will save yourself a lot of money. But these buyouts are happening more and more. Wait a second, we'll get to that at the end of the video. I'm stepping over myself here. We have a lot to cover at the end, so stick around. This video is a little bit longer than normal. Now, Opalescence, of course, this thing says, Each other global enchantment is a creature with power and toughness equal to the converted mana cost. It's still an enchantment. This thing's insane, okay? All these cards are great, but old cards like this... They seem to come up more and more often. They're more broken and players want them. All right, now our next card is coming to us and we are jumping over to Mirage. This is Hivis of the Scale. This card's only $1.91 and it had a bit of a following a few weeks back. It's been on the list the last three weeks in a row. 153 sales, that's only $292.23 if they're all near mint, but that's not what got bought. This is all I could track. There was a few sales afterwards. This thing would probably hit about 180, 190 and how many sales I could track. I ran out of time on this one. But either way, you can see there's significant sales, a significant interest in the card. This is a two red, three generic summon legend. Now, this card is a three four, of course. It says you may choose not to untap Hivis of the Scale during your untap phase. Gain control of target dragon. If Hivis of the Scale becomes untapped or you lose control of Hivis, you lose control of that dragon. That's great and all because dragons keep coming around. And if you've noticed, there's certain cards in those ley lines that can make creature types. It's more brutal than you think. Guys, Dustmorn's crazy. Now, let's jump to Fastball and the potential of an, of, an, of an amazing unbanning that would bring this card back into competitive. EDH has players chomping at the bit. 178 sales, $8,718.44 of sales action, and this card continues to see massive sales, but the price is metered out, okay? It's, it's, it's staying around the $47 to $50 mark. Right now, you see $48.98. I've seen everywhere in between that, a few copies going for way too much money, and a few being a little bit cheaper, so this is our average. Remember, a one green enchantment that says you may put as many land cards into play as you want. It deals one damage to you for each card beyond the first. Insane, great card, and I still play with it now in my casual commander although a lot of players don't allow it it doesn't stop me and my play group this card should be unbanned it should be allowed to play let players deal with the problems of the game and let them find solutions to it don't just give them a hand me off let this one get in there all right guys you got to number one this week and this one is forsaken waste from mirage 
four dollars and 87 cents but dusk morn had this thing chomping okay 409 sales this week 1991 dollars and 83 cents of total sales action now guys when you look at a card like this and you see it's only a one black okay there's other cards like underworld dreams which is a three black casting but this is a single black and two other means this thing fits into multiple colors and the idea of putting this with the commander Vologoth from Duskmore means this thing gets pumped up quick does a lot of damage stops people from gaining life and actually fits in perfectly with that commander card almost like they were made to go hand in hand okay now this card is an enchant world though it says during your upkeep each player loses one life if forsaken waste is the target of a successfully cast spell they lose five life not the most brutal thing but don't forget there's cards that bring these enchantments back opalescence anyone replenish yeah we got lots of options okay crazy cards let's get to the roundup here let's talk about the finance i want you all to just take a moment take a breath and realize what's happening here understanding this market and understanding where these cards are going so many other content creators right now are not mentioning the sheer volume of sales i don't care if it's an expensive reserve list card i don't care if it's a cheap reserve list card I don't care if it's a worthless reserve list card. I don't care if you're chasing down a black Lotus. The sales are higher than people are reporting to you. The numbers are higher each and every month, the last several months from where these cards were earlier in 2024. Just follow my top 10 videos and look at what's going on. Look back on those videos. They're there every week and you can see six months ago eight months ago a year ago you can see how low some of the sales volumes were but with some of these recent new products from wizards of the coast we've seen this contingency plan of people buying reserve list cards not just because they love them but because that that ability to flip a free tendy seems to be there the the bullish market on it with people saying i think this could happen i think we've got something here but i'm not sure so i'm not sure if i want to spend the money on it and then somebody else is taking advantage of that doorstop method of like, I don't really want to buy it. I'm not really sure. So you're not sure to put your foot through the door and then other people buy it. They sell it back to you in FOMO hits. They get the profit. You bought the card. The market dies down. The card goes back on the market because they decide not to play with it anymore. But they sell it at a loss. It's almost like a stock driven market. Wow. What an idea where people buy low sell high and rinse and repeat to the weaker people on the market when you buy a reserve list card when you step forward with your wallet and you decide to buy the card i don't care if you're buying a thrall champion for a dollar i don't care if you're buying rashida scales bait for two bucks or hivis of the scale for a buck 90. i don't care if you buy a black lotus for 20k generally speaking don't sell those back into the market don't sell them at a loss you spent hard-earned money and we've seen time and time again that these cards seem to come back around every couple of years and if you're in this game for a longer period of time and you're going to be here for a while you just have to wait for the market cycle to rehash themselves but the idea that people aren't letting you know that there are more sales going on my channel is not 100k it's not 200k it doesn't reach the wider breadth of what's on youtube and what's out there in the populace of magic the gathering but those who tune in every week get to see what's going on here. And you get a closer look at the play-by-play -play of single sales happening from everything from Facebook Marketplace to individual platforms to your local LGS. I gather as much data as I can to put it together to let you know where sales are happening. No, nothing's perfect. Nothing's 100%. But it gives you a good idea of how the market is moving and where the cards are going. And the idea that they're just not selling and nothing's going on and prices aren't spiking. Look at those. Those are buyouts. That isn't one or two cards. The only cards left in the market in some of these cases are 40, 50, 60 dollar cards that somebody else ends up buying. Somebody jumps in when a Seeds of Innocence is at 50 dollars and they bought it at 50. A week ago it was 11. Then it jumped up to 20, 25. We saw the same with Winding Canyons. It went up, people bought it that high, and now it's going down. It got cut out of the market this week by the sheer volume of other sales. Now, if you want to keep doing that to yourself, if you're not a regular buyer, you don't care, you go ahead, keep doing what you're doing. You want to save some money? You want to pay attention to the market? Watch this channel more often. Follow along what's going on. See how the market moves. I'm tired of people who watch my channel losing money, losing their 
their hard-earned money, their cash that they put together to buy the card only to see the card fall down in price because it can't stay at that inflated level because there's not enough desirability. Eventually, the way this market is going, buyouts are going to return. There are people out there who have a lot of cash. And if they think that card is going to be something they can flip over, they will buy it out quietly. They will wait for the market to hit the right time. And they only have to sell back 10%, 15% to make all their money back. But they get to keep the other 80% of the stock of the card they own for future endeavors, for future profit margin. Guys, I'm letting you know. I hope you found this informative. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you got some knowledge about what's going on inside the MTG market space for MTG finance. You can say it's not a collectible game. Nobody should be buying the cards for these prices. It doesn't matter what you think. It's already happening. You're entitled to your opinion. You're welcome to it. Argue with me all you want. The sales still happen. The cards still go up. The cards still fall. And somewhere in between, somebody lost money. I'm trying to save you a few bucks here. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. Remember, if you enjoyed today's content, like and subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notification bell. We're getting close to that 24K mark, and then we're almost at the halfway point. We're almost at 25K, which is the halfway mark to our grand goal of 50,000 subscribers. Thank you again to everyone who takes the time to watch every day, gives my videos a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy the content every day, and I will see you guys tomorrow with another video. I also have my live stream tonight where we'll see if my internet provider has fixed things or not. But between me and you, I've already sourced out a new internet provider, so in the next few weeks, we'll have a few changes here on the channel, hopefully for the better. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with the Mox Man. I will see you guys tomorrow with another video. Hi, everyone. Thanks a lot for sticking around at the end credits here of the video. Now, a reminder, these are the patrons of this channel. The information gathering, the time and the sourcing it takes me to do this is because of them. It's because of you guys out there who support my channel that I'm able to research these topics, get the data and information for you and present it to you weekly. So take a moment, thank all the patrons or become one yourself. Guys, appreciate it. Welcome back to the Ramble Jamble, guys. Um, the coffee is here in hand. If you're here, you've made it past the yellow brick road of the top 10. You've gone past the Emerald City, you've opened up the gates, gone past the curtain, and you're in that special warm fuzzy place that you deserve to be in, your happy place. Now, guys, I wasn't joking. Dual lands are selling. Not enough to make the top 10. They're selling 10, 15 copies a week, 40 copies a week, 50 copies a week. Cards like um, Replenish. Um, who's the other one? The, the, the Academy Rector. There's a whole bunch of these cards selling 10, 15 copies, and it's continuous now. And, and as the cheaper copies disappear, we see the higher end copies slowly disappearing at that higher price point. Now, lower end cards like Soldevi Excavations, cards I love, don't move as much. Okay, Thrall Champion. But that doesn't mean they can't move. It just means those aren't cards moving now. The cards that really seem to be moving are these weird, weird cards that people kind of played back in the day from the Urza's Block, Weather, Light, Null Rods, stuff like that. And those cards seem to have a cycle now of not quite enough to catch my notice. But when I look at them, I go, wow, that's like four weeks in a row of like 10 to 15 sales. Oh, look over here. Uh, Taiga didn't make the top 10, but it had 18 sales. Now, I know the gentleman still buy um, dual lands every week, okay? And they kind of cap it out each month. They're not buying as actively as they were originally, um, but they do control a large market share of revised dual lands that they have not put back on the market. Now, I don't know what that means long-term for any other player. And I'm not sure of all the conditions of the cards that they're buying. But to know that Moxes still sell every week, a Black Lotus disappears here and there, you have collector edition and international edition cards selling. Legends cards like Neither Void, Abyss, The Moat, Tabernacle Pendrel Veil. These cards are still disappearing. They're still going off. It's not enough that I guess the big YouTube channels are noticing, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. It just means the people buying it now are the ones who really want it or they're doing it quietly. They're doing it in a way that doesn't catch the notice of a bigger channel. Because I know that somebody has bought some of these cards in the past and now resold them and just made a ton of money. So I'd rather you guys know about it than not know. Anyway, 
Thanks for hanging, man. Thanks for being here at the end of the Ramble Jamble. And I will see you guys soon. I'll see you at the live stream. Fancy that, a live stream. And if Rogers doesn't fix my internet, well, it doesn't matter. Because Bell's coming in. And I paid for high-end internet, the highest they offer. So it better work well if you've made it here at the end of the Ramble Jamble. How am I going to pay for it? I haven't figured that out yet. But we're going to work it out because we need stable, good internet here for our live streams. You deserve no less. Guys, thanks again. We'll see you soon. Later, Gator.